While we were worshiping the Lord, I was thinking about servants and sons. You know, it's, it's an old thing. Everybody knows about the difference. But the thought came to me as I was standing there that a servant's focus is on what the master wants. You know, it's, it's very much a, what the master wants, uh, the heart of the master, the vision, uh, the success, the, the life, the joy of the father. Uh, because we work for reward. But when you are in a relationship with the father, it changes. The father focuses on your dreams. The father focuses on your life, your blessing. Because and that's what every parent is like. A parent wants to see their children blessed, wants to see their children happy, wants to see their children succeed. It's not that the master is much focused on the needs of the servants. The servants focus on the needs of the master, but the father focus on the needs of his children. And then the love response from the children's heart releases that worship that we have in our own hearts. Uh, you see, in our, in our sonship, what we must desire is the things that is in God's heart. We must desire what God desires. That, that's the trick. We must, we must spend time in the presence of God so that we begin to desire what God desires and that we begin to pursue what God desires for us. Now, if I ask you a question this morning, what does God desire for you? It might not be an easy question to answer. What does the Father desire for you? And the only place you can hear it is in the presence. A prophetic word is not going to do you good, even though it might be true. The wealth of God sharing it with you. Somebody posted that Joe van der was, Joe and his wife was ministering on a farm just between Bethel and Krill, and we decided we we're going to go. And... Um, you know Joe, he, he ministered here many, many years ago. So we went there, and we, we were truly blessed. There wasn't a lot of people, but there was much more people than I expected. It was just on a farm, on a skier, uh, and he ministered there. But I could hear the prophetic voice beginning to speak that the Lord is concerned about the church not focusing on Him. That we focus too much on what we are ministered to. Listen. Ministry from a man or a woman is a blessing. But it's a greater blessing when what they minister becomes a reflection of what God has already started sharing in your spirit and that you've been picking up these things in your spirit. You know, we're living in a time where the church should actually really suffer, but yet the Lord somehow just blesses His children. I've heard testimonies in this time of great blessing upon children of God's lives in this time where a lot of people are actually suffering, where God just shows His hand. So let's just stay in the pres let's just stay in the purposes of God. Amen. Now this morning we have communion and we're going to start with communion and then we will, I will share a word with you. So I want to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to read from verse 23. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now, one of the translations says this is the new testament in my blood, the new covenant in my blood. The Lord is speaking to me about love because the cross is the greatest manifestation of love that we can perceive. But when we hear it every day, we become desensitized to it. It's like I, I hear when couples have the habit of speaking to each other on the phone, they would, they would end their sacrifice. Okay, love you, baby. Okay, love you, love you. And I'm not saying it's false. What I'm saying is if you just say it every time. It just sometimes it's just a response. But love is not just a response from our heart. It's actually a very powerful thing that God has brought into our heart. And the cross is that manifestation of the Father's love. So when we partake of the table of the Lord, our agreement step into the purpose of the cross. 
where you recognize the love that God had was John 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. You know, that everyone who believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. I think we all know that scripture well. But the connection with love. Sometimes I can say, hey, I love you. I love you, brother. I love you. But I've seen that when people go through a hard time sometimes and and they're pushing into the presence and they hear the exact same words. I love you. It has so much more meaning. It's a, something we've heard it so many times, but yet at that specific time, it cuts right deep into our hearts and it begins to give us something that is valuable and we begin to feel valuable. And I think that's the important thing for the church is that you sitting here today and you must know that you are valuable to God. You are valuable to God. He loves you. He doesn't just love you because the Father doesn't just love you because you believed in Jesus. The Father doesn't just love you because you came over to His side. He loved you even before you chose. But the word says in John, uh, 1 John 4, it says, In this is love, not that we loved Him, but that He loved us. He is the example, the prime example of love, and He draws us into this. And He draws us into love. And I'm going to talk a little bit about intimacy and presence, but when I was just reading this, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. The new covenant is that which made room for us apart from the covenants that God made to the Jews. It means He brought us into the covenantal blessings. He brought us into the purpose that He has to bless us and be our God. And now He comes, He says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. The word says we were justified by the blood of Jesus. And that's why we can come into the most holy place. And He says this is, this cup is the new covenant in in my blood. It is in the blood. That which we believe. We are. We became part of the new covenant when we believed in Jesus Christ. And it is in the blood. So as Christians, you know, you don't even have to plead the blood in order to affect the blood. You are in the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been brought in by grace and the Holy Spirit needs to help us to get to the deeper meaning and understanding of what this exactly means to us and how it affects our lives. This portion of Scripture preceded by another portion of Scripture where Paul actually says to the church, you come, you come into the presence of God, you use communion, but not with the right heart. We're not discerning the body of Jesus Christ. You see, it is easy for a church, for the church, to love God, but it's not so easy for the church sometimes to love one another. And if the love of God does not culminate through our lives, that it brings us to a place where there's a natural affection and love in our hearts for one another, then the love of God hasn't done its full work in our lives yet. And the only reason it's not like that is that we probably resist it, because the natural work of God's love is inclusive. On the cross, who did He exclude? And then I don't want to mention all the sins in this world, but every sinner was included. He died for the world. That whoever believes in Him might have eternal life. So when we partake of the table of the Lord, it is not just a commemoration or a, a manifestation of what I believe. It is a manifestation of what we believe. It brings us together. The only way that this church can ever fulfill its mandate is if we do it together. If we don't do it together, we're not going to do it. It's not always easy. Because there must be enough love in our hearts and understanding of His grace and mercy that we become patient with those that walk with us. That I give you the room to grow. That I give the Spirit of God room to work in your life. But that inherently I can be honest and say that I truly love you. I really love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love that has been poured into my heart by the Spirit of God every single day. And my prime motivation of preaching to you from my side is purely because I love you. I do not want to preach because I have a word or I can preach or because I understand things. We serve you with the word of God. Whenever you say the word of God, you serve somebody with the word of God. That is the purpose of it. We serve you with that word. And we trust and hope that that word will fall in good ground where it, where it will produce a harvest 3600 fold as the Lord intends. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put up some music. And we just want to invite the Holy Spirit to just move in our hearts and that we are aware of the body of Christ, that we discern the body of Christ, that we realize Jesus did not die for you alone. It's not about your ministry, about just you. It's about all of us. And that the Holy Spirit will help us to open up our eyes to see that. And that we begin to embrace the value of the body of Christ together. So I'm just going to do a prayer. We're going to put on some music. And then we're going to partake of communion. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Your word says as often as we do this, we remember you. So this morning, we do discern the body of Christ. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning. If any one of them are being challenged in their heart with somebody else in the church. I pray that you will come this morning and touch our hearts. That our heart can be free in the presence of God. We choose today to forgive those that hurt us, those that irritate us. Forgive us for irritating other people. Forgive us, Father, for being judgmental so often. We ask you this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the the body of Christ that was broken for us, and the blood of Christ that was shed for us, where there's fear that it will bow its knee in the presence of God. Lord, where there is a desire for you, Lord, that you will draw near. Your word says if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And Lord, that in your presence that we will find intimacy with the Father this morning. I pray that in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus.